know, I'm not even sure if I should call that an honor. You know, I, I always hesitate to say it because that means you had trouble, and I don't like to think I had trouble. But a lot of people think because I had trouble and came back, no, I never went bankrupt. A lot of my friends went bankrupt. You'll never hear from them again. So I never went bankrupt. But I worked hard. The markets crashed. 1990, just like you're sitting here, those markets were crashing. They were bad. And Guinness came up, and they figured I did a damn good job. Because today, my company is worth, you know, many, many times what it was in the 1980s and the 1990s. And, you know, it's been good. Business Week said, Donald Trump, they announced different things. Donald Trump is the, by far the most competitive businessman. I like that. I don't know what it means, because, you know, what's competitive? You know, I don't want to be outwardly competitive. I mean, I know guys, you know, you look at uh, Steve Jobs, you don't think of him as competitive, but he's competitive. What a job he's done with Apple. You know, people have done great jobs. But they gave me that honor as being the most competitive businessman, and I really enjoyed that. But the, the word that I'm going to talk a little bit about before we get on to some others is this word, pressure. And how do you handle pressure? Because some people cannot genetically handle pressure. And if you can't handle pressure, then what you have to do is get a good job, get a paycheck, do, work hard, do all of those things. But don't go into business for yourself. Now, you know, your promoters here, and they're great people, but they're probably saying, Trump is talking to our students that are going into business. That's not good. That's not exactly what we want. But I feel I have to be honest. There are people in this room that can genetically not handle the pressures of, of doing what you do. I mean, I get sued every day. I get, it, does, it doesn't even bother me. It's like people sue me. No. <laughs> you know, I call it the long gray line. And a friend of mine comes up to me and says, how do you stand it? You get sued so much. How do you stand it? I said, I don't even think about it. It's just a long, gray, disgusting line of people. And I call them disgusting people. And, and usually the suits are bullshit. But nevertheless, you know, because I have money, I mean, I have cases where a woman falls and breaks her leg. And Trump Tower is on 57th and 5th, has the most beautiful sidewalk you've ever seen. It's granite. It's perfect. Now, she falls two blocks away on Madison Avenue. My security guard helps her, and he says, where can I take you? Take me to Trump Tower. Oh, well, now, my guard's not a genius. You know, he said, oh, that's nice, Trump Tower. So he brings her to Trump Tower, and she said, okay, you can let me go here. He, do, do you want to see a doctor? No, no, I'll take the sidewalk. That's okay. So then the police cars come, and she said she fell in front of Trump Tower, because Trump, you know, has money, and let's get a lot of Trump's money. Now, the security guard took a while to figure it out. He wasn't exactly my most brilliant employee. <laughs> but it was sort of amazing. He said, how'd you get here? One of Mr. Trump's guards took me here. Where did you start? Two blocks away, right? So she wanted to sue me because of the fact that the granite was so perfect that she's not used to walking on perfect sidewalks. This was the stuff. Do you believe me? So you, you have to be careful. And, and you know, to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to give you a couple of stories. Because I think they're just great stories. I love stories. Norman Vincent Peale, I don't know if anyone ever, he, he was one of the great storytellers. You know, he was a preacher, and he was one of the great storytellers. Today I go to church, the minister says, okay, uh, God bless you all, we'll have our offering, and they play the, and we're gone. I say, what happened, where's the sermon? They don't do sermons anymore. Norman Vincent Peale used to give incredible sermons, and you learn from it. When I say, a story I'd like you to learn from. So I have this club in Palos Verdes. It's a very, very rich section of California. It's right near Beverly Hills. And I have a ballroom. It's a golf club. It's got uh, six, seven hundred acres. It's on the ocean. It's phenomenal. It's doing great. And we have a ballroom. And it's, the ballroom seats like 300 people. But we need more. But you can't get permits to build anymore out there because it's California. It's like this country. You can't get permits to do anything in my country. Okay, your country is better, believe me. And your country is so much more advanced than our country. I know you have your own problems. One little story. They asked me to take a picture in front of your opera house, which I thought was a great idea. It was windy as hell. <laughs> and you know what happens when it's windy if you trump? Wait. I don't see a ball spot. 
doing better than most of my guys my age. I love college. I love, you know, I have one guy comes into my office. I say, he graduated from high school. He was the best football player, the most handsome guy. The girls loved him. I say to my girls, don't forget, now he's 64. So I say, you know, this is when he was 18. So I say to my girls, wait till you see this guy. I don't know his name is. Wait till you see him. He's a handsome guy. Everybody loved him. He comes in, he weighed 400 pounds. He was totally bald. He was smoking a cigar, which I asked him to put out. And he had a horrible skin problem. Other than that, he wasn't exactly what we envisioned. I said, wait till you see. And the girls are looking at me like I'm crazy. You know, what, what could this be? But in business, it's so much common sense. I'll give you an example. I, I have a store on Fifth Avenue, a store. And the store on Fifth Avenue is like, it's holding up, the columns are holding up a 69-story building, it's Trump Tower. And I have a tenant that wants to go in. I won't use the tenant's name because they'll probably sue me if I do, so I'll keep it nice and quiet. <laughs> but they hired a, a very elite architect, elite in his own mind. And we have columns. <laughs> we have columns, and they hold up a building that's 69 stories, right? So they come in, and they want to go to the store, and they're paying a lot of rent, and I don't care what they can do, they can do anything they want. They come to my office, Mr. Trump, we'd like to remove one of your structural columns. <laughs> well, because we want to put a door exactly where the column is. I said, okay, I know a lot about this stuff. Nobody knows architects better than me. Bring your architect out. So I asked the architect, why couldn't we move the column Instead of moving it, why can't we put the doors a little bit left of the column or right of the column or put them on the corner? Because I didn't have a column on the corner. He goes, I will quit. I will quit. French architect, by the way. <laughs> I will quit. I, it must be here. The doors have to be there. You know, you got 300 feet where you can put doors. They have to be right where the column is. It's holding up the 68-story building. <laughs> So we called the engineer, the guy that designed the building, and we said, listen, we have a question. This guy wants to put the doors where the column is. He said, I had never heard of that in my whole life. Is that true? He said, that's a massive job, Donald, because what you do is you have to build two new columns on the outside of the one you're taking down. And then after you build the permanent columns, you have to cantilever, and then you can take those columns out. It'll cost you at least two and a half million dollars. I said, no, it's not going to cost me, it's going to cost the tenant, but I, I don't even like being in the building, to be honest. I say, when you do this, let me know. So, I didn't, I didn't tell the rest of the people in the building that I was in Seattle, <laughs> as they're removing the primary column from the building. But they're paying me a lot of rent, it's a great tenant, but a stupid tenant, okay, very stupid tenant. And they go, and they, they say, we can't put the door anywhere. And I'm serious, the other locations for the door were better, and there was no column. Like, you could have got left, you could have got right. They had to be right in that spot. And I said, the architect is doing turmoil on you, and you shouldn't do it. They did it. They spent a year and a half longer getting their store open. And when it got opened, it wasn't even a great store. And they didn't do that well there. And actually, the one that I've just rented, which is Gucci, loves the door where it is right now, and they're going to leave it. I was afraid they were going to want to move the column back. <laughs> so, you know, business is such common sense. So here's a store that goes out, spends two and a half million dollars to do something that was unnecessary. It's business. And I see it. You see it in the government. You see it all the time. So I was telling you about the Palace Verdes. So we have a ballroom, and it holds 300 chairs. And they all want to expand the ballroom. So I go to the ballroom and I say, yeah, but look at these chairs. You couldn't even move them. I see a woman, Mrs. Schwartz. She's like 88 years old. She couldn't even get out. The chair was so heavy. I felt sorry for her. I helped her out. I walked her out of the room. The last thing she needs, the chair is this big. It's this high. It's heavy. It's a horrible chair for a ballroom. So we have 300 of those chairs. So they're trying to figure out how can we get four or 500 seats? So I said, why don't we just buy smaller chairs? And everybody said, huh, that's a good idea. And we got, <laughs> and we got the beautiful Che Avera chairs. These gorgeous, beautiful Che Avera chairs that are actually more beautiful. And now when a woman wants to get up, I mean, she can just lift it up. And, and they actually look better. Here's the funny thing. They look better. So now instead of having a 300-seat ballroom, I have a 500-seat ballroom. And I spent no money, no permits, no nothing. So there's so much common sense in business. I see it all the time. I mean, I look at things and I look at the stupidity with which people work. I look at Obama. 
<laughs> and I say, how did he approve $527 million, more than a half a billion dollars, to a solar company that everybody on Wall Street knew was going out of business? You know, I'm listening to these analysts, and they, they played some analysts from two, three weeks ago, and meaning, you know, as they were giving them all this money. And every one of them said, oh, no, it has no chance, because China's making the product for half the price, and blah, 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 there's tremendous oversupply. And yet, we give them $537 million. That's more than a half a billion dollars. To a company that was founded about 14 seconds ago. You know, I, I deal in, in that stuff all the time. When I'd go to HUD, if they'd give me a million dollars, it was like a major event. If I go, I go up to HUD, I want a million dollars, it's like a big deal. Here they give these clowns 537 million for solar energy, which frankly isn't so good. Now I have to tell you though my energy story because I learned no, it's not good. It's not good at all. And you should be clapping. You've got so much crap in the ground over here. You don't you don't need that kind of nonsense. The plastic is gonna eat your house. You know, they told me they always want me to buy solar. So I'm a pretty smart guy, and I called the solar guy in. I say, what's my payback? Oh, Mr. Trump, you're doing so much for society. I say, do me a favor, don't worry about society. <laughs> society is gonna be here long after I'm gone. Give me the payback. Well, we think you can get your money back in 18 years. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> it turned out the 18 was bullshit. You know if they say 18, that means that's like minimum, right? The real number was 31 years. In other words, I'll get my money back in 31 years. All I have to do is destroy the look of the building by putting solar panels up. The other one are the windmills. I'm building in Scotland a tremendous job, really a job. My mother was born in Scotland. I'm doing it in her honor. I like to do that for, you know, it's great. My mother's great. Mary McLeod. See, everybody thinks I'm Jewish, but I had a mother from Scotland, and she was great. She came over to this country. She married my father. They were married for 65 years. They, they didn't cheat. They were really in love. I mean, it's like, I'm, everyone's trying to figure out where did I come from. <laughs> Even my father used to say, are you sure that you're my son? <laughs> but, you know, I have this great mother, so I'm doing a, a job in Scotland, and the most beautiful shoreline in the world, in the world, the most magnificent, that's what it's known for. The dunes are the biggest in the world, that, and I have the dunes, I bought the dunes. And I got the approval to build a golf course. It's almost finished. And the other day I heard they want to put windmills out in the ocean. Now, they're horrible looking. They give off terrible energy, absolutely terrible energy. And they're just, you know, terrible. And, and you know, it's sort of NIMBY, not in my backyard. Up in Cape Cod, they killed them. But the people in Cape Cod insist on windmills. But then all of a sudden they're going to be moved to Cape Cod. And it was like, no way, no way. Well, I think it's a little bit like that with Scotland. So now I'm fighting windmills. I fight everything. But a lot of times, you have a situation. Like, I stood out in front of your opera house, and the wind was blowing violently. <laughs> so, so you'll see it's ruling my hair, because my hair was way to hell back, and it looked very good. That's, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> but, but the wind was blowing. And the photographer said, don't worry, Mr. Trump, it's not windy at all today. I said, oh, that's great, no wind, let's go. I get out of the car, I almost get blown into the water. That's how windy it is. <laughs> so the, he's a better salesman than he is a photographer. <laughs> so I say to my guy, Keith, do me a favor. I just, I'm a mess. I said, I gotta make a speech now. This was two minutes before the speech. I said, do me a favor, get me some hairspray. I gotta put my hair together. <laughs> so he went and got hairspray. And I sprayed it, and I said, I love this hairspray. This is the greatest hairspray. This hairspray actually works. Because, you know, in the United States, hairspray doesn't work. You know why? Because we're destroying the ozone every time you spray. They say, if I'm in my bathroom in Trump Tower, sealed with concrete, right? Eight-inch eight inch concrete floors, eight-inch concrete walls, I spray my hair, zip, zip. They, they tell me I'm destroying the ozone that's 400 miles up in the air. But, but, 